Hello everyone, my name is Sheena Gaios and I will be presenting on the aversive learning in honeybees revealed by the olfactory conditioning of the sting extension reflex. In simpler terms, the honeybees were conditioned to recognize an odor and paired with either an electric shock or sugar solution and respond with appropriate behavior. To start off, associative learning is the learning process in which a certain behavior is evoked by a certain stimulus. This type of research provides significant insight on an animal's cognition and behavior and also highlights the fascinating neuroplasticity of the insect brain. Two important terms we should know for this study are aversive associative learning which evokes defensive behavior and appetitive associative learning which evokes feeding behavior. Some background information, the zoologist Carl von Fritsch was the first scientist to recognize that honeybees had special chemical and visual sensors and could distinguish between different tastes and odors. But however, for the first time, these scientists are able to observe simultaneously the appetitive and aversive behavior of animals, especially the honeybee which helps us better understand the neural pathways of this certain insect. The honeybee or Apis mellifera has been utilized many times in previous studies because of their ability for associative learning. And in the previous studies, scientists have recognized that two specific neurotransmitters are responsible for their behavior, namely octopamine, which is the neurotransmitter that affects appetitive behavior and dopamine is the neurotransmitter that mediates aversive behavior. In our experiment, the harnessed honeybees were conditioned to extend their sting to an odorant paired with an electric shock while extending their proboscis to an odorant paired with a sugar solution. There were four sub-studies conducted the, in the paired versus unpaired group. The paired honeybees were exposed to an odorant immediately followed by an electric shock, whereas the unpaired group experienced an odorant and the electric shock, but they were temporally dissociated. And the two odorants used were one hexanol and eugenol. The second sub-study observed reinforced odorants in which the bees were continually exposed to the odorant paired with electric shock, whereas the non-reinforced group experienced odorants that they had not used before and were not familiar with. The third sub-study recognized the reinforced odorants versus the bee's ability for sting extension or proboscis extension. And the last sub-study looked into the neurotransmitter effect on the bee's ability for sting extension reflex. As previously mentioned, the octopaminergic neurotransmitter um, controls the appetite of behavior seen here with the proboscis extension reflex in which the feeding mouth part extends in preparation for food and the dopaminergic neurotransmitter exhibits the sting extension reflex seen in this figure. So for our experimental setup we have the bee placed between two brass plates with a harness on the thorax to prevent any mobility. The odorant was kept in this 1ml syringe placed about 3 centimeters from the honeybee's antenna and the odorant lasted for about 5 seconds followed by a 3 second shock afterwards. Here is the air extractor that was continuously on to prevent any cross-contamination of odorants or to absorb any pheromones released by the insect. The first sub-study yielded these responses. As you can see the paired group yielded a higher sting extension reflex compared to the unpaired group, whereas in the reinforced trials, the reinforced odorants had a higher sting extension reflex, whereas the non-reinforced had no response towards it. So we can conclude that aversive memory was formed in the paired but not in the unpaired group. In the second sub-study, it observed the simultaneous aversive and appetitive behavior exhibited by odorants A, which was followed by the electric shock, and odorant B followed by the sucrose solution. So odorant A exhibited a higher sting extension reflex, whereas odorant B exhibited a higher proboscis extension reflex. 
In the bottom, we have the reinforced and non-reinforced odorants. So the reinforced odorant, with followed by an electric shock, had a higher response by the B. And also in odorant A, with a sucrose solution, yielded a higher response of proboscis extension compared to the odorant that was non-reinforced. In the last sub-study, it looked into the neurotransmitter effect of the bee's ability for sting extension reflex. Ringer solution was used as a control and had no effect on the bee's ability to determine between the reinforced and non-reinforced, as well as meanserine, which was used as the octopamine antagonist, which controlled the appetite of behavior. So you can also see it had very little effect on the B's ability to distinguish between reinforced and non-reinforced. However, you can see a dramatic difference for the last chart, which used flupentixol, a dopamine antagonist, and it significantly affected the B's ability to determine between the reinforced and non-reinforced, so it couldn't tell between the odorant paired with electric shock as well as a non-related odorant. So on the bottom here, I just wanted to show the neural anatomy of the honeybee, you can see that the octopamine neuron is in one region of the brain and it sends signals throughout the rest of the brain, whereas the dopamine is located in clusters throughout the brain, uh, exhibited by C4, C3, C2, and C1. And for our results, these are just the words associated with the graph. The appetite of behavior was seen with a proboscis extension reflex with a sugar solution, whereas the aversive behavior was shown with a sting extension reflex with an electric shock. The ringer solution, or a control, as well as the octopamine antagonist had no effect on the bee's ability to distinguish between the odorants. However, the flupentixol, or dopamine antagonist, hindered the bee the bee's ability to determine between the reinforced and non-reinforced. So this highlights that dopamine receptors are vital in the bee's ability for aversive olfactory learning. And we can conclude that the honeybees were able to master both appetitive and aversive associations at the same time. And this further highlights the remarkable plasticity of the insect nervous system. And overall, this study can promote further research looking deeper into animal as well as human behavior um, and associative learning. So thank you for watching.